the experience, he has the leadership, and he has the vision. Please welcome Dr. Elson Floyd. Well, Rich, thank you very much for the introduction, but the reality is this bold initiative in which we are pursuing is a reflection of this incredible community. I am but one of the vehicles upon which we will make that happen. And it's all about collaboration and it's all about partnership, but I'll return to that in just a second. When Rich gave you the whist list of things that were most important, at the top of the list was medical education. I must tell you, at the top of the list for me is the bullet train from Pullman to Spokane. <laughs> the other thing is, Rich is just sort of an amazing person. He calls me and he says, Elson, I want you to make this presentation in Spokane at 7.30 in the morning. And I said, okay. And he said, well, but there are some other things. I said, well, what's that? He said, I also want you to go to Olympia with us. I said, well, okay, that's fine, I'll do that. And he said, but there's one more thing. I said, what's that, Rich? And he said, I also want you to co-chair this committee with Scott. I said, okay. And so I saw him this morning, he had this big gold box. And I said, oh, finally I'll get a gift. And he gives it to Sean. <laughs> Thank you, Rich. I really, I really do appreciate all you do for me. And then he puts me beside the most ambivalent person in the world, Tom Quigley. Um, so it's just a, a great morning. <laughs> it is indeed a, a great morning because I'm in front of you. I want to share with you a little bit about what we are doing in the context of this academic health center. My son Kenny says, Dad, we're going to do some real talk. And what that means for him is really serious and something that's real important. So this morning is real talk. It's not about what's politically correct. It's about where we're headed and why we're headed in this particular direction. I have the, the great privilege of serving as president of Washington State University. But that's not the end of the story. The beginning of the story goes back to the late, 18, late um, 1989 in which I was having a conversation with my mother and I said, Mom, I want to do something that's, that's a little bit different. And she said, well, what's that? I said, I want to go to a different part of the country. And she said, well, where is that? And I said, well, I want to go to Cheney, Washington. And she paused for a second and she said, I guess you're going about as far as you can go. And the reality is, I wanted a different experience. I wanted to be part of a growing, dynamic, vibrant community. And I found that right here in Spokane. And I must tell you, it is all of that. It was also at a time in which there were all of these turf wars, if you will, between Washington State University and Eastern Washington University. It was about who was going to provide educational programs here in Spokane. And I must tell you, it was the most incredible waste of time to be arguing about those issues for a community that clearly deserved more. And it deserved two institutions in lockstep trying to make a contribution to this community. The reality is if Eastern Washington University or Washington State University were cited in today's marketplace and environment, they would have been cited right here, right here in Spokane. And so you would not then view the Zags as your home team. Uh, but you would probably view the Eagles or, or the Cougs as, as your home team. And I must tell you, it's easier for me to talk today than it was last year when I was here, uh, because we beat the Zags, and that's a good thing. You know, we find ourselves in a vortex, a vortex of change and discovery and innovation and creativity. We also find ourselves in a vortex of uncertainty, new leadership skills, declining resources, and an absolute redistribution of wealth. We find ourselves in a vortex of a new vocabulary. Rather than talking about this economy as moving up or moving down or being flat, we use letters in cell instead, L's and V's and W's and symbols like square roots to decide and define 
this economic circumstance in which we find ourselves. But I must tell you, the solution in the future will be bold and creative and a different approach to what we do. And at the core of the approach in which we must and should have in place will be collaborative partnerships. And that's where we should have been in 1990 when I was at Eastern Washington University. We should have been talking about collaborative partnerships. But instead, we were talking about who owned what and who provided what. And in today's academic environment, it is all about the interdisciplinary work in which we are part of. And so when I had the great pleasure of returning to this community as president of WSU, I made a solemn pledge to those individuals with whom I had conversations, the most salient being my Board of Regents. And I told them that we would be very clear about our engagement in Spokane. We would not be wasteful of the resources that are entrusted to us, and we will engage in academic programs of uncompromised excellence. And so one of the things that we did immediately upon my arrival was to do a brief survey of strengths of this community, and there is no doubt that at the top of the survey was the health care that's already being provided. And so we almost instantaneously made the decision that that is the engagement that Washington State University will have in Spokane. And we will do it, Rodolfo, in partnership with you and your amazing institution. And we've been very clear about our responsibilities and our obligations in that regard. Because now is the time for us to be really focused. And so beyond the focus in Spokane, and I will talk about that in just a second, we are equally focused with our campus in Tri-Cities in which we will focus on bioenergy and bioproducts, and we will do that in collaboration with PNNL. In Vancouver, we will focus on applied technology. And in Pullman, we will have a full comprehensive array of programs that you have become accustomed. And from the great number of our graduates and alums have benefited from. And we have an obligation to make sure that we maintain the strength of a Pullman campus. But that campus would not be as strong as it is were it not for the engagement that's here in Spokane. And what we will do in Spokane is the following. We will be an important part of an academic health center. Here in the heart of Spokane, in the university district, which all of you are so passionate about, and that Marty reminds us every day is the highest priority in this community. And you may say, well, Elson, what really is an academic health center? I hear all of that all the time and not quite sure what it means. Well, it has to be affiliated with an accredited degree-granting institution of higher education. And the institutions that we have in place right now are WSU, the University of Washington, and Eastern Washington University. Secondly, it must have in its midst a medical school. Thirdly, it ha must have one or more health professional schools, like applied health sciences, or nursing, or dentistry, or pharmacy, or public health, or vet med. And it must have an affiliated relationship with a teaching hospital or with a health system. Well, you're getting the point. We have all of that right here. And so the creation of a medical school will create this vision of an academic health center. And what that will do is to add to the economic growth and vitality, research engagement, and the overall improvement of the quality of life here in this community first and foremost. But one could say that's a very bold and very audacious goal. But we haven't stopped there. Because we believe that if we do this appropriately, it will have a huge impact all over Eastern Washington. But it doesn't end there either, because we know that if we do that right, this academic health center can indeed become the model for health centers all across this country. It will become the model because we will design it in a fundamentally different way, consistent with the core values of this community. If there is ever a place that understands collaboration and partnerships and getting along, it is clearly the city of Spokane. And so we have charged the deans from our various schools to get along as well and to put behind them the turf issues that sometimes present themselves in academia. 
And so I want you to think about this template with me just for a second.